What's up, listeners? Thanks for tuning in today. Just a reminder to you guys, you can go listen to this episode on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube if you want to watch the full video there. Also, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Same handle at Settle Down Media. And enjoy the episode. All right, welcome back, everybody. This is Good Old Hockey Podcast, episode number 24. Hope you guys liked that intro. We worked super hard on it. And if you didn't hear it, it's because it was really bad and I just deleted it all. So with that being said, uh, you know, we got some – I feel like it was a pretty slow week in the NHL. It's been kind of cooling down, but it is going to heat up once playoffs start, which is in, what, two weeks, three weeks? Um, oh, yeah. But before we get into that, we're going to be talking, you know, Macklin Celebrini, all that stuff. We're also going to be doing a Frozen Four bracket challenge for you guys. Mix a little college hockey into here since, you know, we had a kind of slow week. But the college hockey world did seem like it was, you know, on fire. So before we get into that, Galley, how was your weekend? Weekend was pretty good. I watched probably more basketball than I ever have in a a single weekend. Um, Really didn't go out too much. I unfortunately found out on friday that i that i owe a lot of money in taxes to the irs so shout out the yeah. internal revenue service yeah. whatever the heck it's called but uh yeah they they're gonna get a nice paycheck from me on april 15th so that's yeah. a bummer but uh it kind of set me back for this week i didn't really want to go out i didn't feel like spending any money at all besides on takeout food and stuff because yeah. i was lazy and sports betting, of course but um yeah, oh, yeah. yeah it was a good it was a good weekend watching uh you know march madness uh all sorts of good games. NC State, I feel like, is might go to the Final Four. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, hockey's done. We uh, B-League champions, just to remind everyone, the hooligans. Yep. We got 3v3 coming up uh, this uh, summer and on top of some softball, too. So, excited for that. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't the most crazy weekend. But how was, how was your weekend, man? Uh, yeah, mine was, you know, same thing. Watched a good amount of basketball. Um, you know, it wasn't, uh, it was a rough weekend. It was way well, yeah, I had a friend's friend's birthday. She just turned 21 a friend's sister. Um, so it was a lot of going out Friday and Saturday. Well, okay. Friday night we went out Saturday. We did a bike bus, which was super fun, but then yeah, those the are a good time. To, yeah. By the time we had to re rally on Saturday night, I was Texas toast. Um, <laughs> so it was rough, but Sunday I had a good little, reset relaxation watch some basketball um you know overall it was a good weekend um my bracket is completely fucked uh not yeah. excited about that don't know about yours but my bracket you guys haven't yeah we have because what before yeah we haven't talked about this but we got 75 of you guys maybe not all of you listening but we got 75 of you guys to join our bracket challenge which we're very proud of very happy. Hell yeah. Um, love that. Uh, if you haven't joined it yet and you already have a bracket, you actually can still join it. Cody found out the hard way. Um, <laughs> if you've already made a bracket, you can still join our group. It's just settle down bracket 2024. So do that if you haven't. The cash prize is 100 bucks. Or if you're in the Boise area and want to go to this game, Boise versus Oregon tickets um, for you guys. So that being said, enough of basketball. Let's get into hockey. Yeah. I'm just looking at my standings right now. I'm 29th yeah. right now, so that's 29th. a that's a big uh, bummer. I believe I'm 57th. So <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty bummed. Thought I, you know, I don't really look too hard into it. 58th place. Sorry. Looks like um, Yaya is uh, in first right now, though. No, that's Isabel, his girlfriend. Oh, it is. Yeah. She's in, she's in the lead. I just I just saw a year. <laughs> yeah, no, I, so I saw his last name, so that was him. Yeah, no, she used his last name, which is kind of funny. Um, but with that being said, I'm gonna <laughs> kick off into coast to coast. We've got our three stars of the week. We've got some pretty pretty sh- brightly shine stars. First Common star, names for these three stars. Yeah. Oh yeah. First star is the man chasing Gretzky himself, Alexander Ovechkin, with seven goals, one assist, and four games played. He is 51 goals away from Gretzky's record. And what are the Caps sitting at? Like, how far are they out from playoffs? Dude, the Caps are in a playoff spot right now. They are. So, like, okay. this is this run that has been fueled somewhat by Obi. Not going to give him all the credit um, because, you know, he's their main goal scorer. 
in the heart of their team, obviously. But uh, yeah, the Caps are sitting in pretty good, pretty good spot right now. I mean, they're only one point ahead of the Red Wings in the the second wild card, so it's nothing mm-hmm. solidified. But for them, I mean, I think last time we talked, uh, last episode, I mean, we put the Caps out of contention, like we did. completely. Um, they were, I want to say, more than three games out of the playoffs. So the fact that they crawled back and they're now in a wild card spot, um, pretty interesting. I don't. I still don't really see them doing too much in the playoffs, but it would still be cool to see Ov get carried into the playoffs really hot. Yeah. No, it would be cool. I mean, I don't think that they're in any place to be contenders, but it would be cool. You know, one of his last playoff runs, um, maybe get to the second round. That would be kind of cool. One hundred percent, dude. Speaking of seven goals and four games, yeah. I mean, that's. That's crazy for for his age. Yeah. One, yeah. Um, I don't. I don't. I mean, maybe Gordy Howe back in the day was scoring at that pace at his age, but I don't think there's been many players that are scoring at that pace. No. Um, his age. To be fair, he had a really slow start to the season, but yeah, for yeah. him to be ramping up and I mean, shit, he might he might hit thirty goals, which would be incredible from this yeah. the start of the season what he was at. Yeah. Um. So big big shout out to Ovi. He proved that. He proved the naysayers wrong. Everyone, including us, were, yeah. I, I wouldn't say including us, but somewhat yeah. we were like kind of yeah. skeptical if this is it yeah. for Ovi. A yeah. lot of people were like, this is, he's done. But yeah. it's really cool that uh, he was able to pull it together. And seven goals mm-hmm. in, in four games definitely is a deserved first star of the week. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's honestly props to him. Um, I mean, it wasn't really just this week. Like he's been slowly heating up, slowly but surely. But yeah, this week he really, insane. Um, so here's my my question to you. So right now he's at how many goals is Obi sitting at right now? Um, I want to say he's at like 22 goals. So with his 22 goals, I wonder how many he's gonna end with at, like at the end of the year. Do you think it's possible that he breaks Gretzky's record next year? 82 games played. Say it's a regular OV season, 40 to 50 goals. I mean, could be very well possible, you know. You know, if he can, if he can chip away, and it's not, you know, his last hot stint of the year. I like he really had like him hitting fifty goals next year. Like if he were to stop scoring now and have to score fifty next year, I would say that's pretty tough to do. But if he can chip away with what thirteen so games left, yeah, he's he's at twenty six goals right now. So I mean, I if mean, he can get it down to. Uh, that's 40 I mean, yeah i mean, I mean he, that's a solid 11 that's 11 goals that's almost like a goal per game which i mean shit he's on yeah. pace the past yeah. few games you know i don't know that he's gonna hit it next year and you guys can clip this and call me a dumbass <laughs> but i don't think he's gonna hit it next year and i really i mean i feel like he's gonna keep playing as long as till he breaks that record even if he's fourth line guy um you know, I mean, it's 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 tough to say that he's not good enough to play in the NHL because the guy literally just scored seven goals in four games. But I don't think it's happening next year. I think it's going to be the season after that. What about you? You know what? I'm going to be the devil's advocate, and I'm going to say Obi's breaking the record next year. I think he's going to end the season off with a lot of goals, and I feel like he's going to need like something like 43, 44 goals to, to break that record, which – um, you know, if he's playing like he does now next yeah. season, you know, I think that he's definitely going to break that. But I just think that Obi's one of those players, like he's got that drive. Like if it's within reach, I think mm-hmm. his teammates and he's going to do everything in his power too. And I'm talking yeah. like, even like empty nets, like yeah. they draw past Ovechkin so he can get yeah. Gretzky's <laughs> goal, you know, yeah. Yeah. I think there might be some of that, but. I'm just going to go off a limb and say he's going to break it next season, and it's going to be probably one of the biggest stories in hockey in the past oh, yeah. ever, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, yeah. yeah, that would be crazy if he does next year. I, I hope he does. I hope you prove me wrong, Ovechkin, but I don't <laughs> think it's going to happen, unfortunately. Year after that, you'll have a great, great day. But, I mean, if he can get it down to, like, 40 goals away, I mean, he might be able to, you know, push because that just means – for him, he gets to retire and, you know, maybe he's not that he wants to retire, but you know, the quicker he does that quicker, he can retire. But with that being said, the guy that will be chasing him is our second star of the week, Austin Matthews. Um, you know, I, 
was funny because we talked about this like a month ago, but I've been seeing graphics about how Ovechkin, where he's at now, or sorry, Austin Matthews, where he's at now, he is ahead of Ovi from where, how many games, like however many games played Austin Matthews has, he has more goals than what Ovechkin had at this same pace. So I think we are possibly going to see him break whatever record Ovechkin sets. But before that, I mean, looking too far the future, let's focus on this season. He's at 58 goals. Yes. 58 yeah, goals. 58 right goals. Now. 13 games left. Do you think he's going to hit over 65? I don't know. Yeah. Just cause like, I think Obi was the last at 65. I don't want to say yes. he did it in 0- yeah. 08, 09, 07, yeah. 08. Uh, around that time period so and i think that's the most goals since the cap era has been implemented which 2005 which is is pretty crazy no one's got over that 65 i think mcdavid got the 64 last year um i mean shit you said 12 games left he's at 58 like i feel like he's he's gotta hit it i feel like he's maybe gonna get to like 66 67 but like i i I think he's gonna he's gonna hit it and um, I'm all about the saying yes to predictions today, so I'm gonna say yes. Okay. Uh, all right. He will hit 66 goals by the end of the season. Okay. Hey, you know what? What do you think? Because I... he has slowed down a lot. He has yeah. cooled off since like he was on a tirade, like hitting 50 goals. Yeah. I've been accused of being an Austin Matthews hater, um, <laughs> and I don't know that I'm an Austin Matthews hater. I'm more of a Leafs hater, if anything. But I don't know. I mean, 13 games left, and you're also on a team that is trying to make, not make the playoffs, but trying to, you know, do something in the playoffs. I don't know that it's worth pushing yourself for personal accolades like that. Um, You know, you don't want to get to the playoffs like the Bruins did and just blow a tire. Um, So I don't know if he's going to do it this year. I'm going to say no. I just don't think that with 13 games left i mean what's he got to get uh he's got to get what six games six goals no seven goals yeah seven seven, seven goals, goals to hit 65 five. yeah okay so he's got to score every other game and uh, if, if i think your betting is it. right if your betting is right he only score or he only goes scoreless every two games right okay yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my that's my methodology. If yeah. he goes scoreless two games in a row, you hammer that anytime yeah. goal. Austin Matthews third game. Seriously, anyone listening, like Galley's been on it. <laughs> we should be posting it more. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty much the lock. Every time he's gone two goals without a game, he will score on that next game. So, uh, but you know what? I'm gonna give him the love he deserves, and you know what? I think he's gonna get 66 this year. So. We're gonna be riding with you, Austin, and I hope you prove Come on, me, Austin. I hope you prove me right and don't prove me wrong. Um, but with that being said, number three is the guy I've been accused of glazing is Connor McDavid. Uh, he's got, you know, honestly, as a third star and getting one goal and ten assists in the last four games. It's insane. I mean, that's kind of what we expect out of the guy. Um, but still, I mean, what does he got on the season? Ninety-one assists. On the season yeah night yeah 91 assists on the season is ridiculous dude he was also um, like beginning of the season he was like tied for like 30th in points and now yeah. he's what tied for or he's in third probably yeah I, I i just feel like yeah no i think he's he's definitely top five i don't know if he's third necessarily um but yeah he's turned it on he's shown that he's like one of the best players in the league, if not the best, can yeah. turn it on whenever. Yep. Um, I wonder if it's going to correlate to any success for the Oilers. Probably not. Um, yeah. But, yeah, dude, damn. I mean, 11 points in... I mean, 11, 11 points in four games. I mean, that's more than any of the other stars, and I think probably the most in, in the league this this uh, this week. So, yeah, um, yeah man, like Connor McDavid... <laughs> He's he's the best no. in the league right now. It's yeah. it's it's no hard to to not say that he isn't. And I feel like McKinnon can make a pretty good case if he's a little bit better. But um, I just feel like he can't ma- match McDavid's playmaking and and just skill and, and yeah. all overall. So yeah, 
No, exactly. But well deserved third star. He's got to be in the first first three stars like four yeah, or five times this year. Same with Matthews. Austin, yeah. Him and yeah. Austin Matthews have been in the third the three stars for the last month, it feels like. But with that being said, we will move on to the National Predators. Uh honestly, I said this last week. I'm gonna say it again. Very shocked at what they're doing. Um, you know, beginning of the season, I didn't really have really high hopes to them. I was at their season opener where they beat the Kraken, won about 30 bucks um, on an actual legal gambling site, um, which was crazy <laughs> to do and fun. Um, but yeah, they, uh, I don't know. I am shocked. They're very hot right now, though. I mean, they are what? Are they in a playoff spot like secured yet? Yeah. Yeah. I w- they haven't clinched it, but they okay. are, unless something crazy happens, um, they're they're in a pretty solid playoff spot. So I, I mean they're nine points ahead of the the Blues for at least a playoff spot. They're five points ahead of the Knights. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, it'd be awesome if the Knights didn't make the playoffs. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, the Predators are looking solid. They would play Vancouver right now if the playoffs started today, which would be a banger of a series. Mm-hmm. I think Vancouver and it's Nashville so would be so yeah. sweet. I also think just Nashville being in the playoffs is just good for hockey. I feel like it's oh, such yeah. a good playoff playoff atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Um, you got some of the craziest fans in the NHL. So many cool traditions there. Um, I just think it's going to be really awesome. Yeah. I, I know in the playoffs, they like bring out a car and smash it and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. Just smash real, dude. It's like I'm stoked for to see them in the playoffs. And yeah. um, they're going to get a good, good s- series, whoever they play against. I don't think they're really going to push into the Central Division. I mean, they're only, I mean, if you look at it, they're only five points out of away from Winnipeg, which would be crazy if they somehow secured a spot in in the Central Division. But I don't think it's going to happen. I think that they probably will play Vancouver or whoever's first in uh, uh, the, actually, shit, no, Vancouver. They would play, pardon me, I think I totally messed this up. They would play Colorado first right now by a point. Mm. Yeah. So that would be a hell of a series too. I would. That'd be an interesting series, but it would be be a tough one, I feel like. Um Yeah. yeah I think Colorado yeah. would have come out on top on that. Yeah, I do too. If they played Vancouver, not that Vancouver's bad, but it's it's tough like when a team like this heats up right before the playoffs. Um, you know, they have so much energy coming in and you know, you're playing a team that <clears throat> not that they've given up, but you know, they know where they're at and they're cruising by, but these teams that fight for playoff spots and are, they've been in, this is what happened to Florida last year. They've been in Nashville is in playoff mode right now. Yeah. They are in a win now mode. They need to go and they need to secure a playoff spot. So they're already in the playoffs right now in a sense for them. It's do or die right now. The Canucks or whoever they play the avalanche. um, That's not the same case for them. I mean, yeah, they're trying to win. But the Predators are in playoff mode right now, so I would say watch the fuck out for them. Yeah, speaking of, like, I mean, they got UC Saros, who's 12-2-2 two, and two in the past two months of his starts, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I didn't have enough time to pull what his save percentage is, but it's pretty high up there. Yeah. Um, but not only that, I mean, I feel like Philip Forsberg, or Philip For- Forsberg, however you say his first yeah. name, um quiet 39 goal season i mean he's been he's been ripping up the i mean he's been leading the uh, predators in in points but 17 points in his past 10 games he's been a big factor to their their win streak but yeah man i mean i think uh with those two players going in right in and hot to the playoffs it could be a good thing for nashville but it's going to depend who they play i mean if they play with someone like the abs i don't know but against the canucks i'd probably give them a chance yeah, I give them a chance against the Canucks. I don't know about the Avs, though. But you know what? That leads us perfectly into the next team because the Avalanche are on a nine-game <laughs> win streak. Uh, McKinnon, 22 points in March, which, wow. Uh, I think we should do a player of the month at the end of the month. Yeah. He'll definitely be up there along with Kucherov. But, I mean, I don't know, though. There's so many, pl- like, we'll, we'll get into it next episode because we'll have to pick. But... Uh, they are first in the Central right now, but they're tied for first with the Stars, right? Yes, correct. And that's going to be – I'm so curious who's – because yeah. 
I think the central race, I think we've talked about it probably yeah. more than anything. Maybe the Atlantic we've yeah. talked about a lot. Yeah. But with the central, it's pretty important because it's like you got three incredibly good teams. You got mm-hmm. the Jets, Stars, and Avs. All right. Yeah. Any of those teams probably are going to crush a wild card team. Maybe not Vegas. But <laughs> I mean, for example, I mean, if one of those, te- I mean, whoever, anyone, the playoffs is a playoffs. Everyone's going to have a, a hard matchup. But for, you know, say the first round matchup, if it's Dallas versus Winnipeg, I mean, that's a, that's going to be a pretty grueling series. Or if it's Colorado versus Winnipeg, I'm sure Winnipeg is going to play um, in that third spot. But with that being said, I mean, first place is not safe at all. Say if Vegas slots in there, that's going to be a hard matchup for them too. Yeah. But I feel like the central race is, is very intriguing because you got three just stellar teams that might be first in other divisions. But mm-hmm. for two of them to be playing each other in the first round, it's going to be an, a really good first round. No, yeah, I think it will too. I mean, I think it'll be interesting with how, you know, only one of those, one of those three teams are going to make it to the Western Conference Finals, which is tough. I mean, I think it'll be a good series, but, you know, out of the West... I mean, it's not like Vancouver doesn't deserve it, but, you know, I feel like those three teams and yeah, we did. I feel like we called it in the beginning that the central was going to be this tight, at least between the abs yeah. and the stars. I didn't, we didn't think about Winnipeg. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I think it'll be interesting when those, you know, how, how this playoffs shake up and like, you know, where everyone's placed. Um, yeah. Especially you know, if I, one of those teams starts falling, like they're yeah. going to be in danger. Because like that's mm-hmm. the one thing you do not want to go into the playoffs, even if you're still sitting in a divisional spot and you're going to the playoffs just losing. That's yeah. not going to be a good thing. So yeah, well, also I mean, whoever gets that first spot is going to be playing a wild card team. I mean, if it's Vegas, it's a different story. But you know, I think I'd rather play the wild card team versus the Stars, the Jets, or the Abs, whoever it is. <clears throat> I think you'd rather fight for that one spot, which I mean is the goal of anything, but it's more important out there than in the Pacific say it'd be a little bit different where you're like, eh, well, I don't know if I want to play the Knights. As a yeah. So I don't know, but do you have any last comments? Yeah. On this I think, uh, you know, we're talking about playoff spots so much, bring back the old playoff format. I really yes. like the one through eight yeah. just because I feel like a lot of good teams are kind of getting some interesting matchups. Um, I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not the, biggest hater of this new playoff format but um i just feel like the matchups would be a little bit more balanced with that one through eight and we wouldn't see um you know some examples of of teams that barely squeak in the playoffs but also that's kind of good because those teams that barely squeak in the playoffs like the panthers for example last year can make a cup run so yeah um there's there's pros and cons of it but i'm just more of a fan of the one through eight um, it's just more simple. I feel like it's more attainable for, for teams that are on the bubble too. So, yeah, no, I agree. Um, I think, yeah, like you said, the one through eight, I think is way better way to do it. It's just weird where we're in a world where the stars could potentially play the jets where, you know, where the stars could play the avalanche, you know, that too. even where I, yeah. yeah, that's true. Where I feel like that would not have happened if the one, with the one through eight seating thing. Um, you know, I kind of like the wild. I don't know though. I don't really like the wild card thing at all. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's just, it, I mean, it kind of evens out eventually with the wild card. It's just the way that these teams play each other. It's like, I don't know, even if you're the second best team in, if you're the second best team in the West, but the first best team is in your division, then you get stuck playing a pretty good team. So I don't know, but, uh yeah moving on to yeah sorry <laughs> teams in the standings and stuff yeah who is gonna get macklin celebrini that's gonna be our next topic on the slate just to start off with i know it's been around a lot of, in the hockey news right now but he swept the hockey east awards which hockey East is a conference in the ncaa um, player of the year rookie of the year scoring title and he's a hobie baker finalist all at 17 years old like mm-hmm. Bam. To be doing that in the NCAA is pretty impressive. Um, you know, 59 points in 35 games. Not only that, he's a goal scorer, 31 goals in those 35 games. I mean, 
this guy's all doing that and he's not even 18 which is yeah. crazy because some of these players out there are 21 22 um so for him to be doing that in this sort of league the ncaa is i think that he potentially could be more nhl ready than Connor bedard did coming into this year you know it's not a not a bad take um I, my only thing well no i kind of agree with that honestly i i feel like obviously bedard had so much of this hype around him it's a bold take for sure it is it is <laughs> but bedard had so much so much hype around him and you know i feel like i i mean macklin celebrini definitely gets a lot of praise and everyone knows he's going to be first overall pick um but i will say he did not sweep the hockey east awards because his future teammate will smith won the finals mvp or the championship mvp for boston college so macklin celebrini you are a shark um you and your teammate can you know put those in the mantle all the hockey east awards that they got um you know i i don't know uh, being real i mean i'd love for him to be playing as a shark he grew up there um played for the junior sharks so it'd be cool full circle moment but are you saying celebrini celebrini damn cool. i didn't even know that he was from san jose area that's really cool yeah i knew his name i don't i never met him but i definitely heard of him like people were like oh this kid macklin celebrini is pretty good his dad's actually damn. a trainer for the golden state warriors and there's actually film of Draymond Green talking about Macklin Celebrini saying that he's like a goat and this was like Damn. two years ago. Yeah, I'll I'll share it with you. But that's so um, crazy. yeah, he you know grew up in San Jose. He grew up in San Jose for a couple of years. He didn't play because then he went he played Chicago Steel U eighteen. I think he played Shattuck St. Mary's as well before that. Um but I mean I think he is gonna be a star. Um I think it'd be cool to see him and Will Smith playing together. But I know everyone else wants fucking him and Connor Bedard to play together. And I'm not one to call the NHL rigged or the draft rigged because it doesn't go my way. But if Chicago gets him, if Chicago gets him, how can you not say it's, it's not rigged? I'm going to be so disappointed if that happens. And so bring a center, right? Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, please, please NHL. And hockey gods don't don't have Macklin Celebrini go to the Chicago Blackhawks. I mean, I'd be happy with him going to the Sharks, or you know, maybe a very lucky pick for the NHL uh, dumpster Calgary Flames. But um, (laughs) yeah, yeah, don't even get me started about the Flames this week. God damn, yeah. (laughs) But uh, yeah, no, I think Macklin Celebrini is going to be an instant impact for anyone next year. Um, But not only that, I think he's he's got to be the lock for for rookie of the year next year. I mean, I can't really think of anyone else's who's Will Smith. He leads the league right now. He's uh where's he at? Yeah, but okay, he's playing Macklin? for the sh- he's playing for the Sharks. <laughs> no, but he got drafted. He was playing with the USNDTP. I mean, yeah. yeah, he's already drafted, but he's a freshman too. They're both yeah. freshmen. He's just That's true. a little bit young. Like he's like a old he's like in the cutoff years where he couldn't get drafted last year. Well, but Will Smith could surpass him, no doubt. Will Smith, so read the stats. What are Celebrini's over 35 He's got games? 59 points over 35 games, so okay. 31 goals. Well, and In Will Smith's 37 games, he's got 23 goals, 44 assists with 67 points. Okay. Okay, so a like, little less of a goal scorer than Celebrini. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's 31 versus 23. But hey, not not saying that he's I think it's it could definitely be in between those two players for um the call next year. I don't know that Will Smith I I don't want to say this on air, I guess, but I I I feel like if Celebrini were to play he would be a caller favorite over um Will Smith. Will Smith does have a little bit of age on him. He played USNDTP and also his line mates all played with him at the USNDTP. God, that's such a mouthful. Um, all of his <laughs> line mates, Ryan Leonard, Gabe Perot, and him have all played together for a while. So I feel like that's also helping Will Smith play at the level he's playing. But I still feel like he's going to be a star. But I mean, I feel like 
Celebrini kind of has not he doesn't have a lock for Calder next year because we don't know what could happen, what rookie's going to come out of yeah who you know, who knows draft. this is these are bold yeah. predictions from yeah, the Galligator yeah. right now so <laughs> um but you know I don't I don't know that he'll have more of an impact it depends on what team he plays on if he's on Chicago yeah. I mean it may look like he has more of an impact but Bedard's going to be the number one star of the Blackhawks Celebrini will always be number two but. You know, I think we'll see how it plays out. I mean, when is the the draft lotteries? I want to say after the second round. No, it's it's no. usually towards the. I don't know. They kind of switch it up. It's some I've seen it happen like the it night before be, the first round starts. Yeah, it might actually be sometimes really soon. Oh my god, I'm getting nervous. I, I wish you would <laughs> like Zach Voice. And I think we got to do we got to do a live stream for that too. Oh, like we will 100. percent Oh my god, dude, I'm so excited. We didn't even. Yeah, no, we will because, dude, that okay. I'm so excited for that. That'll be so fun. Um, yeah, because if the Sharks get it or if they don't get it, it'll be an even reaction out of me. So, but, uh, yeah. With that being said, I think it's time. We've been talking college hockey. We're gonna get into this frozen four bracket challenge. Oh yeah. All right, well, let's get into some college hockey picks. We got the Frozen Four coming up. Starts on Thursday, all right, the 28th of March, which I feel like that's a little later than it usually does start. But we did find some a, a website, which there's not many out there that you can actually make picks, like yeah. a normal March Madness bracket. I wish Frozen Four got a little bit more of a following, but you know we're going to have fun. We're going to fill out some brackets right now. Uh, shout out SueSports.com. Yep. Speaking of the Sue. Oh. He's I got the hat. University of North Dakota hat. This is from like my fucking, I think I was seven, seventh grade. Yeah. I used to go to yeah. hockey camps out there. So this is an old hat. You can see the wear and tear on it. But yeah, let me oh, yeah. share my screen. All right. So first Starting. up for. Here we go. Yeah. So first up for the regional. All right. We got the regional. We got Boston University versus RIT and just to pull up some background on these teams um and Sean do we do we want to just make one bracket ourselves or how do we want to do this yeah let's make a good old hockey podcast bracket I would say yeah 100% so we got Boston University versus RIT Boston University is 26 9 and 2 um they do have the guy Macklin Celebrini we've been talking about a lot RIT mm-hmm. is 27 10 I think this one's easy. I think it's going to go Boston University. What do you think, Sean? Yep, I agree. All right. Next on the regional in Sioux Falls, Iowa, we do have Omaha versus Minnesota, which Mm -hmm. Omaha comes into this. I believe they won the NCHC tournament. Um, They're 23-12-4. They've played North Dakota a lot and been kind of North Dakota's menace. Uh, this year they beat them a lot too and then minnesota is 22 10 and 5 i think they made the finals last year as well but who do you have on this you know i as a kid wanted to go to minnesota for college um but you know i'm gonna ride with omaha minnesota i i kind of want an upset here I yeah want a bit of i think upset. i don't know what you think i think omaha is a solid team I think Omaha has this yeah. 100%, but we'll see. I think that's going to be one of the best games in the first round. Yeah. Uh, next up in Springfield, this could be Massachusetts. I'm not totally sure which Springfield. It could also be Springfield, Missouri. Um, Illinois. <laughs> or Illinois. Yeah, Maybe. there's a few yeah. Springfields around the country. <laughs> we got the University of Denver versus Massachusetts University, um, which UMass? Denver's 28 28- nine and three at umass and then we got 2013 and three for massachusetts you know i'm thinking that denver has this they're the third ranked country team in the country they've been yeah. had a pretty solid season so yeah what are your thoughts on this i'm gonna go denver as well um okay yeah i think it's tough to not take them but i feel like that will be a very interesting game and a very good game yeah 100 percent um, Maine? Next up, we got uh, Cornell and Maine. Just looking off of uh, record sake, uh, we do have Cornell coming up at a 21 6 and 6 uh, record uh, versus Maine with a 23 11 and 2. Maine does play in a lot tougher of a division. 
um, than Cornell. Um, but for this one, I'm going with Maine. I feel like we went with Omaha, our last two and three game. But yeah. what, what are your thoughts on this? I would go with Maine. I don't know that Cornell. <sighs> no, I'll, yeah, I'll I feel like I haven't, heard, I, don't... I haven't heard too much about Cornell. Yeah, so. no, I haven't either. I'm, we'll stick with Maine. Okay, yeah, and playing. if say if we have conflicting views on one, we're just gonna flip a coin. Yep, yep. <laughs> I got a coin ready somewhere. I'll find one. All right. Next up, we got uh, we got Michigan State versus Western Michigan. Uh, going into the tournament, Michigan State's one of the best teams. Uh, yep. They're coming in with a record twenty four nine and three, and then we do have Western Michigan coming in with twenty one fifteen and one. Um, what are your thoughts on this matchup? I can you know, kind of like sense a upset here. I do too. Like I don't know why they're a good. Michigan State's a good team, <laughs> but for me, it's not like you know basketball NCAA. You could pick all the one seeds in the first round, and you know. But this is a little bit different with hockey. I mean, you're playing. It's also not as many teams as March Madness is. But I'm gonna go with Western Michigan. All right, let's go with Western Michigan. And then we got Michigan, U Mitch versus North Dakota. Um, and I, I think just wearing this hat, I'm gonna have to go North Dakota. But if you think Mitch, we can we, we can flip, flip this coin. coin. All right, coin. let's let's flip this um, coin. I might I might uh let some Sioux fans down here wearing this hat. <laughs> out of this little sharky thing. <laughs> All right, Dad going back home. All right, we're going to flip a coin for this. Michigan versus North Dakota. Here it goes. Oh, oh, tails. There it is. You can see it if you can. Oh. We didn't even call which one is which. Ah, uh, shit. All right, let's redo it. <laughs> Sorry, we did this. We did this last Cut it time. out. Yeah, we did this last time with the March Madness bracket. We did the high seed is heads, low seed is tails. Okay. okay. So now we know. I'll flip it because it North Dakota change. is tails. No, no, no. The higher seed is heads. Okay. Okay. Or two. Here we go. Okay. Tails, it is. All right, we're going Michigan. Michigan. Damn. Sorry. I'm Sorry, not. North Dakota. <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, Boston College and Michigan Tech. I think this has got to be Boston College. BC. Yep. Give it to them. All the way. All right, then we got Quinnipiac versus Wisconsin. Quinnipiac did win it all last year. Um, they are playing a pretty good team against Wisconsin. I think we got to flip the coin on this one. I'm not totally sure. I'm going to go with Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac? Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty evenly matched 26-9-2 yeah. for Quinnipiac and 26-11-2. Wisconsin. Wisconsin's tough, though. That's a good I, team. I'll, I'll Honestly, ride with your pick and let's... Yeah. I believe in the, you know, they're reigning champs. They're going to have some fight in them, but I don't think it's going to... We'll, we'll get to it. All right, so but... now we're into the Elite Eight. Um, we'll just start We'll start back over here with this regional. So we got Boston University versus Omaha. Um, to be honest, I know I was really talking up Macklin Celebrini, but I just think this might be Omaha's year. I think really? I'm going to go with Omaha on this one but what's what's your thoughts i'm gonna go with bu on this but we'll flip a coin we'll see so bu's right. heads omaha's tails all right it is heads oh all right we got bu damn going on? sorry <laughs> omaha <laughs> uh all right, all right. next this we got was... denver and maine Ugh. i personally like denver in this i do too I put Denver. Okay. Is, it's hard to go against them. Let's let's this go. This Denver, Denver BU game would be freaking pretty sick. Yeah, be bolts. And then we got Western Michigan versus Michigan. I'm gonna have to go with Michigan here, especially yeah, if they're gonna I'm knock good. out North Dakota. I think they have, oh, they've yeah. got a pretty good team. Yep. So we're I gonna go too. with Michigan. And we you got know, Western, BC. Western Mich would be, you know, they'd be riding on a pretty good high, but I think Michigan would. Whoop them. Shit, man! If, if Western Michigan beat. University of Michigan, that would be a pretty big upset. But we got Boston College versus Quinnipiac. I'm going to go with Boston College with your Me boy, too. Will Smith. Yep. All right. 
All right, so we got three one seeds. Yeah. <laughs> in the Frozen Four, yeah. um, we'll start off with the left side. We got Boston University versus Denver. I out of these two teams, I think Boston University has got it. I do too. What are your thoughts? Well, I want to go Denver on this one just because I don't know. I think it'd be cool to have a BU, and I'm gonna be rooting for Boston College to go my final. That would be my final two. So I'd kind of want to see Denver play them. So I say we flip a coin. Let's do it. All right, heads for Boston University. Yeah, since they're on top, we'll do them as heads. And it is Boston U. All right. So we got Boston University in the chipper. And then we got Michigan versus Boston College. So this is a semifinal. I, I like Boston College in this. Yeah. I know. This would be a crazy, yeah. crazy Boston final, but I think it would be pretty sweet. That would be, yeah, it would be awesome. Um, yeah, I would pick them. Uh, they are num- ranked number one in all of NCAA. But I was looking and I saw that there has not been a one seed win the tournament since like the number one ranked, not a one seed, but the number one ranked um, NCAA program has not won a tournament since like 2016 or something. I don't remember who it was, but so it's why I'm a little scared that Boston college isn't going to win just because of the, I guess curse or whatever it is. But I do think they're going to move on to the finals, though. And okay. We'll debate whether or not. This is a crazy to... finals. Boston yeah. College versus Boston University. Um, pretty funny. We we ended up here at this <laughs> point. But out of these two, I think uh, I, I think I got Boston University. See, I don't know. I'm so uh, this would be a crazy matchup if this happened. But I want to say yes. Boston College has already played Boston University and Boston College won. But again, <clears throat> this is regular regular season. Um did they who'd they play in the hockey East championship? They played BU and won. BC did. Yeah. So this would be a repeat of the, the hockey East championship. But you know what? I'm gonna ride with them again. I'm going to Boston College, so we're gonna have to flip a coin. We're gonna have to flip a coin. All right, let's uh let's go to the higher seed. So let's go Boston College heads, yep. Boston University tails. It's in my hand. It is tails, Boston. Oh, U. oh. BU winner according to the coin. So Macklin Celebrini gets his chipper. Yeah. I don't know if you wanna make take a screenshot of this and we can do like a graphic out of it and share it with everyone. Yeah, definitely. Um but that is our tournament challenge hopefully you know maybe we're the ones to do it to get some more you know notoriety or whatever it's called for college hockey because it is a great sport and you know i feel like more people need to pay attention to it so it's gonna be our job get it up but 100 that pretty much kicks off episode 24 a little bit of a shorter episode for you guys today but I promise with playoffs coming up, it's going to heat up and we'll be having longer podcasts. Maybe even if you guys are interested in it, doing a two part, two parter of the week, talking, you know, early week and end of week, uh, just so we get more content out and especially for the playoffs. But Ooh, yeah, um, that being said, Gally, I don't know if you got any shout outs or anything you want to you know, talk about besides shout out the shout out the irs for for charging me lots of money but uh yeah, yeah thanks for for taking all my tax dollars away from me yeah no, i'm joking uh, go, yeah go go flames um even though they're in the dumpsters right now but uh so i guess go sue go university of north dakota <laughs> yeah. thanks and shout out everyone watching us um yeah, no yeah i know we got lots of hockey fans hockey fans are the best fans in the world oh, so yeah. appreciate everyone uh listen to us watching us watching our reels tiktoks whatever it is thank you for following so hope to see you in the future yes sir we are at 230 followers now or subscribers now on youtube so if you're watching this on youtube shout out to you if you're listening on spotify uh apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to we want to thank you 
uh, and go follow us wherever you get the most out of your podcast. If you're more of a YouTube guy that wants to watch us, that's awesome. If you just want to put us in your ear and on the drive to work or wherever you're going, that is awesome too. Um, but we just want to thank everyone that's listening up to this point as well. Or if you never see this, we still want to thank you. Even if you clicked on it once. Um, but for real, we will see you guys in the next episode. Hopefully we'll get, you know, a little bit hotter topics. I mean, we're only three weeks, two weeks away from NHL playoffs. So it is getting hot in here. So take off all your clothes and we'll see you guys next week. Later.